Hi, my name is Ava Cronti. I'm from the Bay Area, and today I'm going to be talking about neuromodulatory effects of music therapy and emerging therapeutic direction in Alzheimer's disease. In this presentation, I plan to summarize key findings in the space of neurotransmitter systems involved in Alzheimer's and music therapy. While all neurotransmitters are affected by this disease in some way, today we will be specifically, specifically focusing on serotonin and melatonin. So to start, what is Alzheimer's disease? Alzheimer's disease, which I'll be referring to as AD throughout the presentation, is a neurodegenerative disorder and the most common type of dementia that affects nearly 6 million people in the United States. When we hear the word Alzheimer's, most of us just think of memory loss. And while this is true, this disorder also affects learning, sleep cycles, communication, and overall mental health with symptoms such as depression and anxiety. As you can see from this chart, the cost of dementia in the United States alone is staggering. Experts predict that unless we are able to eradicate these neurodegenerative diseases, the annual cost of patient care and lost productivity is estimated to reach $1.1 trillion by 2050. Which brings me to my next point of finding reliable treatment options for patients with AD. Before we get to that, let's go over how Alzheimer's occurs. Diagnosis for AD can only occur post-mortem as the biggest indicator of this disorder is beta amyloid plaques and hyperphosphorylated tau tangles that form in between nerve cells, thus blocking neurotransmission. For some unknown reason, mutations of the amyloid precursor protein within the brain occur in every case of AD. This mutation causes proteins to clump together, forming plaques of neuron on neuron dendrites. Because of these plaques, the neuron will no longer be able to receive communications from other neurons, but it doesn't stop there. Phosphorylated tau tangles then begin to form on the cell body, weakening the neuron even more. If the dendrites in the cell body are impaired, so is the axon in the axon terminals, which store thousands of neurotransmitters before they're released. However, if the axon terminals are destroyed, this could lead to lower levels of serotonin, melatonin, and other neurotransmitters. Now, why is this important to know? Well, there have been many attempts to create a targeted therapy that would specifically go after amyloid plaques and tau tangles. However, clinical trials have not been successful. This has led many researchers down the road of alternative therapeutic interventions as a successful option to treat Alzheimer's. Now let's take a look at the most important part of this review, music therapy. According to the American Music Therapy Association, music therapy is, quote, the clinical and evidence-based use of music intervention to accomplish individualized goals within a therapeutic relationship, unquote. Over the years, it has been most commonly used to manage anxiety and depression and improve communication, sleep, respiration, blood pressure, and heart rate. While all this is great, how do we know that it'll help AD patients? Interestingly enough, many of these conditions are symptoms of dementia and Alzheimer's. There are also multiple studies indicating that music can activate almost all areas of the brain, including the hippocampus and the internal cortex, which are the two most affected brain regions in AD. But how does this interact with key neurotransmitters? Well, let's find out. First up is serotonin. Serotonin is a neurotransmitter that regulates mood and contributes to multiple brain processes such as memory, learning, and sleep. However, most people are taught that it's the happy chemical. Serotonin in the brain mostly resides in the Rifi nuclei located in the midline of the brainstem. Serotonin is an imperative part of our brain function. So how is it affected by a neurodegenerative disease? Many studies have connected low serotonin levels with a variety of mental conditions like depression. Depression can be an early symptom of neurodegenerative diseases. In fact, 40 to 50% of people with Alzheimer's develop depression. This suggests that serotonin deficiency may be partially responsible. For example, some studies of postmortem AD patients found a significant decrease of serotonin in the hippocampus, which is a key brain area for learning and memory. Another study found that 80 patients have significantly lower levels of serotonin in the locus ceruleus neurons when compared to healthy subjects. When the locus ceruleus is damaged, the body may experience low blood pressure, loss of alertness, or depression, further enhancing cognitive behavioral and psychological symptoms of dementia. Beyond the more common symptoms of AD, there are somatic changes that occur in key organ systems, 
such as decreases in bone density. Interestingly, the serotonin system has been implicated in controlling bone density as well. Preclinical studies have also focused on these changes. One study in particular used mice models to verify that bone loss in AD occurs prior to dementia and is partially caused by defective central serotonergic pathways. So now that we know the interaction between AD and serotonin, how can music therapy help? It was recently discovered that the type of music therapy can drastically affect serotonin levels. For instance, receptive music therapy increased serotonin in elderly patients with dementia, whereas interactive music therapy had little to no effect. There are many studies using rat or mice models to show that serotonin levels increase just after a few sessions of music therapy. For example, rat subjects with depression and chronic mild stress rats both experienced a spike in serotonin levels after participating in music therapy. These levels were especially high when paired with a pharmaceutical drug. This shows not only that music therapy increases serotonin, but it could also be a good secondary treatment. Now, if we take a look at the graph here of music therapy and depression, this graph demonstrates a separate study in which the subjects took part in a music therapy session for six months and had a lower depression score than just the, the, the psychotherapy alone. While this was not tested on Alzheimer's patients, depression is a common symptom of this disease and a common byproduct of serotonin deficiency. Therefore, we can infer that the end result might be similar. Next, we'll take a look at how melatonin is affected in AD. Melatonin is both a neurotransmitter and a hormone produced in the pineal gland of the brain. It produces a role in the body's sleep-wake cycle and helps regulate circadian rhythms. However, melatonin deficiency can induce irregular sleeping patterns or insomnia, leading to chronic sleep deprivation and potentially causing high blood pressure, heart failure, depression, and overall cognitive decline. Naturally, as one ages, their melatonin levels decrease, but multiple studies have shown that melatonin secretion is especially impaired in Alzheimer's patients. According to a 2015 study, individuals with irregular sleeping patterns have 1.6 times higher risk of developing cognitive impairment or AD in the future. Additionally, the authors discovered that 15% of AD in the population may be correlated with sleep problems, implying that melatonin deficiency could be directly associated with the progression of neurodegenerative disorders. To add on to this, almost half of the critically ill AD patients developed something called sundowning, which is described as a state of restlessness, agitation, or confusion that worsens during evening hours. However, due to the melatonin's antioxidant and anti-amyloid properties, having more of it in your brain could potentially protect the brain from amyloid plaques. Just like serotonin, melatonin responds very well to music therapy. Studies have shown that elderly subjects saw a spike in their melatonin levels after participating in music therapy for five weeks. This shows that consistent treatment over time will lead to longer lasting results. There are other ways to enhance music therapy, such as incorporating another non-pharmaceutical treatment into the mix. Bright light therapy and music therapy have many similarities as they both have been used to treat anxiety and sleeping issues. Pairing the two therapies together could result in a larger increase in melatonin, however, there is not enough clinical data to say for sure. Also like serotonin, there are specific types of music therapy that stimulate melatonin better than others. An example of this is elderly patients feel much more relaxed and demonstrate increased melatonin levels when they are listening to sedative music rather than rhythm-based music. This reinforces the idea that personalized music therapy would yield the best results. In serotonin, many Alzheimer's patients experience serotonin deficiency leading to higher rates of depression at 40 to 50%. In both clinical and preclinical trials, research shows that serotonin deficiency leads to increased cognitive impairment. Music therapy increases serotonin levels in both clinical and preclinical trials, especially when individualized and paired with a prescription drug. Now, studies that show melatonin secretion is specifically impaired in Alzheimer's patients leading to sleep deprivation. Melatonin can also slow down or reduce Alzheimer's neuropathology. And finally, elderly people experience significantly higher levels of melatonin after listening to music therapy sessions. With these results, I believe that due to its positive neurochemical effects, music therapy should be considered as a secondary treatment to Alzheimer's disease. However, the relationship between music therapy and other neurotransmitters should be further researched. Thank you so much.